especially with my belief or whatever. Oh, that's one thing before you got the phone. That's another thing that we got to answer because he's a Stone Cold Christian mm-hmm. and I am a pompeous. What's going on? It's Philly Celeb, and you tuned in to the Late Night Date Night Podcast, where we sip on adult beverages, eat the finest hood Chinese store cuisines, and we pick the brains of the most beautifulest women in the world. Make sure you tune in every week. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and make sure you wear condoms, because it's spooky out here in these streets. Level up. These niggas not on my level, on my level. No, these niggas not on my level, on my level. No, these niggas not on my level, on my level. No, these niggas not on my level, on my level. No, these niggas not. What's up, Pontius? Uh, uh, Pontius? I never heard I of it. In, I worship the universe. Um, I believe once the, uh, you know, we got naturalistic Pontius and we got scientific Pontius. And scientific, um, naturalistic Pontius, they believe that God is in everything. They believe God is in flowers and trees and, you know, birds and bugs or whatever. But my belief is, I believe once the universe was, the earth was created, the universe was separated from the earth, and God is the universe. I'm listening. Yeah, I believe in the like, universe. I worship the moon, and I worship sun and stars. Like what? I what, worship. Hmm? What got you into that? Um. Well, I started off as a Christian, and after I, you know, realized that I started studying the Bible because I'm the Bible never made sense to me. It did. Um. I. I guess because I was always reading it on a worldly note. I was reading like in a third dimension. So it never made sense. And then also I was just at these problems that I was dying away with myself. So I was like, okay, wait a minute. If, you know, Jesus is supposed to do this, I'm doing all this good stuff and I'm battling, I'm fighting hard. Why the heck am I still having a hard battle with this? I'm praying, I'm trying to do everything different about this. So, um... I guess after my little suicidal attempt one time when I was young, I decided to like seek another religion. So I started studying um, Buddhist. Okay. And Buddhist brought me so much peace to myself and gave me so much closure about my past and everything. But I just still was confused about certain things. I'm like, you know what? This doesn't make sense either. You know, certain principles. So I started studying Hinduism. So Hinduism kind of taught me more about acceptance as well. I mean, it, I just got something from all of it. And then once I got down to the law of attraction, that's when I started like studying the world more on a scientific note. Okay, you know, energies like you know about the Earth being a magnet, about how we're created off energies and yeah, yeah. So that right there confused me. So then all of a sudden I started dating a satanic worshiper. I started studying witchcraft. Okay. So after me studying all these things, I started saying, you know what? All these religions are kind of similar. Like they all, well, actually they are. And I started saying, you know, they all have a lot of things in common. And that's when I realized that the New Testament was a lot different than all the other religions. But the Old Testament was similar. And then when I started dating a satanic worshiper, I actually studied the satanic Bible. I did. Well, I wanted to know. I was curious. Well, what's in the satanic Bible, if you don't mind sharing? Because I wanted to... Um... It's more about worldly things. It's like things that we actually battle with. It's more, but Which is funny because in the satanic Bible, I didn't see it mention anything about Jesus. Yeah, I heard that the Satanic Bible was more so like the famous quote was like, "Do as thou wilt," like do what you want to do. Yeah, it tell you to do what you want to do, but it's kind of it. The Satanic Bible is like any human's brain. If a person do anything evil to me, I'm gonna do something evil to you, or I'm gonna try to avoid you. If you do, if you love me, I'm gonna love you. So that's kind of like how we are. So the Satanic Bible is it. It's not, would you classify it as something evil or is that just a misconception? I would not see it as evil at all. It didn't preach not one evil thing in it. Like what, what are the main things that it, that it taught? I'm sorry, not the. 
it tells us how, like, you know, like, um, it preaches about, which, which one I'll say, like, how we all follow and give our whole life to falsify gods and be, um, how can I say it? <laughs> It kind of teach, I mean, it, it teaches you things about worldly things we're dealing with. It teaches about people like, for example, let me ask you a question. If somebody kills one of your loved ones, how would you react to that? Would you be like, okay, on the Christian note, would you say, okay, I forgive him. Even though he killed my child, I forgive him. And I'm a, you know, I'm going I'm to love him because he's God's child too. You're not going to say that. Not at all. As a Satan Bible say, if somebody harms your kids, you're going to harm them too. Exactly. Or you're going to harm them. That's what that's about. It's common sense. So, so why is it called like the Satanic Bible? Like, does it mention I Satan? Feel like, honestly, I feel like it's called the Satanic Bible because it also makes truth about the other religions, and they don't want. Well, I don't want to say they because I don't sound bad. I feel like they don't want. I mean, I feel like all religions came from Egypt. Okay. And Egypt people from Egyptian, they were they were not into like you know gods. They weren't into like human figure gods. Like, all that came from, like, the Greeks. Greeks were creating, like, you know, because even, like, even with their mythology, they always add, like, humans on it. Like, you got Caesar, you got Zeus. They put human figures over what they consider as God. The Egyptians were, like, stargazers. They worshipped the moon. They worshipped the stars. Like, they, you know, they believe that, I believe more like they were, like, demigods. And they separate themselves from, like, the actual gods. Like, I believe when they were talking about the sun, they were talking about the real sun. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, the uh, Greeks came and added a name, and they called it Jesus, the Son. That's why when the Bible always talk about, oh, you know, God and the Son, you know, that they separate, the, they try to separate the two and added the Son with Jesus. Okay, okay. I saw something like that on a documentary called The Zeitgeist. Yes. Like the twelve disciples is like the twelve Constance. um constellation stars. Mm -hmm. Constellation, yeah. So as a pantheist, I that's why I worship more like the universe. I do stargazing. Now, real quick, back to the double Bible thing. I just want to clear up some things too, mm -hmm. real quick. I mean, I still want to get to the pantheist. Now, does it have? It's not. I it's not like witchcraft, is it? Hmm. It's not the same as. Is witchcraft, is it? No, witchcraft is way different than satanic. Okay. Like, what, would you be able to tell me the differences? Because I hear some people that practice Wicca, they do the same thing. Like, they worship, like, the moons and the stars and stuff like that. You said you study Wicca, right? Or no? But guess what? Let me ask you a question. When oh. you read the Old Testament, um, God mentions more about the sky, too. Even when Jesus was talking to, he talked to the sky. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because in the Old Testament, <laughs> in the Old Testament, I kind of knew the Old Testament. I didn't really believe it too because that religion never like I never hear the Bible talk about any other planets outside the universe. It only talk about the sun and the moon and stars because uh, that 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 again, the Greeks didn't know any of those other planets exist in that period of time. That's why, that's another thing that struck me because if you look at the paintings of the Egyptians and the different colors of planets that they have stuck on top of their heads or how they have it spread out, they were the only ones that knew about this stuff. You yeah, true. So that stuff had like a lot of like, okay, so you could tell that it got the religion got stolen and they just added things on it. And that's why the Old Testament, I have to always call it the slave religion. Well, not Old Testament, New Testament. I always call the New Testament the slave religion because if you look at any religion that is associated with Christianity, or it's Catholicism, Catholic, uh, Protestant, or whatever, they all associate with slavery. Yeah. So, <laughs> but if you look at other religions like Buddhist, and you look at Hinduism, like any other religion, you don't see those type of things. Like for example, Martin Luther King, he start he practiced a lot of his uh, preachings was from Hinduism, from the Hinduist, um, from Gandhi. Seriously? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. Um, around that time, that's teaching peace. That's why he was so peaceful with uh, such a tragic situation like that. Because, I mean, anyone else probably would not, you know, had to kept their sanity in that situation. But he taught, you learned that from Gandhi and that kind of stuff. That's when I started also studying Hinduism as well. 
So what what led you exactly to Pythonism? Like, how did you find out about that? You just researched it. You said what? Pythian. How you say it? Pythonism. 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 It's a, it's a different religion. Mm-hmm. How did you like? Did you look it up and how did you fall into that? Like, how did you find out about it? Um, I had. A, I don't know. I just the more I started doing research, it kind of stemmed off from the law of attraction. The more I started doing research, and I, you know, came over, it just it just came over me. And I was like, oh, this, this makes a lot of sense. It was like, because I, I read a lot. Okay. So, I can't really say, okay, I learned it because it's somebody else. I didn't. It was just a, a religion that I was just, well, a belief that I was just looking at things. And I already knew I worked the universe. I was like, okay, so if I worked the universe, where did the universe, the universe thing come from? And that's how I pretty much I learned about it from that. So you can see now a lot of people... Um, speaks about it. So in that religion, do y'all believe in like heaven and hell? Or like, what do y'all believe in? No, we believe that that's that state of mind. That state of mind, yeah. I had a book by some guy named Reverend Pearson. I gotta get it mm-hmm. again. When he was talking about that too, like heaven and hell is just a state of mind. I had a whole book. I I lost it or misplaced it somewhere. But he was saying it's called God. It's called God is not. Christian, Hindu, Muslim, and just named all the religion, and it like it was a part in there where he was talking about heaven and hell. And he said heaven, heaven and hell is just a mind state. It is because I mean, think about it. If, if somebody does something bad to you, <coughs> have that mood you're in, it's going to dictate how you feel at that moment. So with this religion, like, where do y'all? Is there like a? I want to say like a church, but is there like a place of worship that y'all go to? No, there's no church. Like, how do you find other pantheists? You said what? How do you find other pantheists? Um, well, like, on groups, and if you just know those kind of pantheists, you're just going to know them. Like, I mean, there's not that many pantheist believers out there, so it's not like I, you know, would say I know a lot of pantheists because there are not that many out there. Do y'all have, like, a set of rules that you must follow? Hmm? Do you have, like, a set of rules that you must follow that might classify you as a pantheist? Like, yo, you're not a pantheist if you don't, if you do this, or if you're a pantheist, you have to do that. Uh, I mean, I guess, all I got to say is, like, if a person is a Christian and they say they worship Jesus, I would consider them not a pantheist because they actually worship, a, you know. No, but, like... I can't set questions, like, like, how could... I mean, when it comes to the universe, it's something that nobody can't really explain okay so everybody's gonna look at it and they're gonna get what they want out of it okay like how's do you believe i mean do you bring up being a pontheus when you're dating i dated someone a pontheus no like when you're dating somebody else do you bring it up that you're a pontheus a lot and how does that work well, with the guy who um talked into it, he's pretty open to it. I can tell that he does. He prefer me to be a Christian because I mean he's heavily involved in church. Mm-hmm. But he accepts what I am. But from what he gets, I mean, he thinks I'm a witch. But why do he think you're a witch? Do you like do spells and stuff like that? Yeah, I would do certain spells sometimes. But they're not like bad spells. I might do like a detox, like cleansing spell, or like. Um, a good luck spell. I don't do that spell. I might do a freezer spell or something like that. A what spell? A freezer spell. What's that? I just want to keep bothering you. You feel like a freezer spell, but it can stop bothering you, stop thinking about you. Oh, how like how would that spell work? I tried it for the very first time. One time, it actually kind of worked. Hello. Yes. Oh no, I'm saying like. How does the spell work? Can you give me an example of like some of the spells? Um. Well, you know, also with that one, it's like a simple one. It's like you get some water and you put it in like a you post it in a ship like that, and you write, you know, whatever you post to write on it with the person's name. You put it in there. I guess depending on it, how how uh, obsessed the person is with you. Mm-hmm. Some people put alcohol in it. Some people put like vinegar in it. I didn't put any of that in there, but it was funny because it, it actually worked. 
And what does it do? Stop them from contacting you or thinking about you? Yeah, she did. The first thing was harassing me. Stop talking to me. But in a way, it's like, I don't know if it, it brought good attractions for her because she found a husband. That's what, that's what she needed all along. Oh. Uh. So I was pretty happy that it went that way. So do y'all have a book that y'all read for being a prophet? It's kind of like how Christians and other religions had a Bible or the Quran. And... Mm, you got people that write books about it, but I don't read books on people's, because like I said, books is nothing but people's opinions. That's true. So how do you, that's what I'm saying, like, but how do you find these spells? Oh, now the spells are books. That's what I'm saying. Like, how do like who created the spells? Like, is it like passed down, or is it some spell somebody else created? Um, they're like books. You get you can go get a, a book of spells. Um, of course, it's witchcraft, mm-hmm. whatever. But I mean, witchcraft got stolen from us too because you know it all comes from Egypt. People in Egypt was practicing magic way before you know the Greeks got their hands on that too, and did what they could. They got what we what what we call it. We call it voodoo or hoodoo. What they call it, they call it witchcraft. Okay. So, are there any consequences for using these spells? Um, I learned as my learning spells mean spelling, and say for example, if I don't like you, mm-hmm. and this is a good example, you know, people bad mouth us all the time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when anybody bad mouths say, "Oh, I don't," you know, he's he's never gonna be nothing. I'm like, I feel like that's a spell itself. Yeah, they, I was watching something. They were saying like the English, the English language and words are considered spells too. By saying yeah, that, it's your tongue. Yeah. If I curse you, if I say anything bad about you, that's a curse. That's called cursing. True. True. If I say anything about good about you, they they try to call it manifesting. Like it's like we're putting good blessings out for you because we're saying something good about you. What Christians call blessings. Now, can somebody? In your religion, can somebody overcome a spell? Huh? Can somebody overcome a spell that's put on them? I don't see. I'm going to give you an example. Because, I mean, for me, you know, people are like, oh, spells don't work sometimes. It depends on your energy. If I'm in my lowest point and somebody's bad mouth me, I'm going to attract everything that person said about me because I'm negative only attracts negativity. Mm. But if I'm positive and somebody says something bad about me and put that on the universe, you're only going to attract what you said about me back to you because you don't know what's negative at the moment. it got to come back to someone and it's going to come back to you. So I'll be careful what I do or what I say. That's dope. I do believe in that too, the, the law of attraction and the words. Mm-hmm. and the manif- law of the karma. Yeah, manifesting destiny. Yeah, I believe in that. Mm-hmm. Do you have any like books that you could recommend that someone could read if they're interested in this? Um, they got a book called The Twelve Laws of Karma. Mm, um, cool. I don't know who wrote it, but it's a good book. It teaches you about the laws of cause and effect. You know, it teaches about the laws of attraction. It teaches about the laws, you know, it just it breaks it all down. Um, I don't know, like it teaches me. I read, but I'm not like one of those like. If I want to learn anything, I go into read other religions. Like this, I've been learning about chakras, and I want to learn about it. So I started studying yoga. Um, Buddhists speak a lot about chakras, so it's Hindu with them. So I know where to go to go look for it. And I now listen to a lot of tutorials, like meditational tutorials. But I try not to read too much different books because, like I said, there are other people that can So... If I'm reading somebody's book and they say, oh, yeah, the universe is really not real. Or they might say something like, oh, there's another planet found in the universe. I'm like, wait a minute. What when the heck did that happen? I don't like stuff like that. And if they don't give you actual facts to prove it, you just get a whole bunch of book of paper, no pictures, nothing. Yeah, that's <laughs> deep. So do you... Uh... I said that for Christian. Every Christian has a different way of how they look at God. Like a, a Baptist might have a different way how to a Pentecostal pastor might look at God. Okay. Like you got Jehovah Witness might say, okay, God. Only reason I like about Jehovah Witness one time, they, they kind of, one of the Jehovah Witnesses that came over, he kind of made, gave God like human emotions. And I thought that was really cute. Well, because and, most Christians don't do that. Christians the, don't do it. In the Old Testament, he had human emotions, right? 
Yeah, but see, Christians, they seem to forget about that. They are like, oh, God, he's perfect. He don't act this way. He don't do that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Did you not remember when God came there and seen those people selling stuff at the church or whatever? And he got mad and started beating ass? Yeah, they said God and he an angry God in the first in the first in the Old Testament, like a jealous God and you can't worship yeah. nobody else. All of this, but they destroyed. forget about that. Yeah. They don't look at those as emotions. They look at it. Okay, I don't know how Christians forget that. Yeah. When I said, "Oh yeah, Jesus got angry," they're like, "No, he didn't." Well, wait, don't even pull your book out. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I think the fact that a lot of due to the fact that religion was forced on so many black people. It can, I think Christianity confused black people too. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Because even like the guy who I'm talking to, he's a Christian. But me personally, when I get married, I don't my belief I don't believe in divorcing at all. I believe once I made a you know, a promise to the universe, we gotta stick this thing out the room. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if we do have niggas divorce, I'm not gonna remarry. Now, of course, people disagree with me, and I have some people argue with me about it. And I said, maybe I'm being a little too strong on that note. Because they asked me would I ever marry a guy that's married, and I told them no. But, you know, one of my other friends was like, hey, you know, what if his relationship was terrible and the girl didn't want him? And I'm like, yeah, if she cheated on him, because you know, from what the Christian book says, if once you get cheated on, the person who got cheated on is free away from the curse. And they're able to walk away and go be who they want to be. While the other person stay there, he's still cursed. Man, that's deep. Because you, you broke it. It's like, marriage is witchcraft. It, it is? Yeah. So I didn't know that. You might have to break that down for me real quick. <laughs> when, when I say witchcraft, I mean like as far as the setup. Look at all the setup. We got to go in front of a priest. Mm-hmm. We gotta have flowers presented, people's walking down, everyone's, you know. Anyway, um, once we get there, you know, he reads this book, words, which I consider called spellings. And then he's talking to the higher being, which is the universe. Then he goes down, he tells you, okay, would you take her to be your lawfully, whatever. And he said, through sickness, through thin, rich, poor, whatever. All the words that goes with it. And then you say yes. Now you can, So then the other person, he asks them, and he says yes. Then you guys are presented with rings. Okay, the rings are solid. This is, now this is the um, piece of material that you guys are going to accept as y'all just say yes and put this on your fingers. And you both pretty much just gave off to each other like on that note already. So then after we do that part, now we got to go and jump over a broom. Yeah. Hmm? And I'll say, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. And then after that, we go and we party, whatever. But I kind of noticed, because I don't know, maybe I'm, it's just me being paranoid or whatever. And now, do you ever notice when guys or women or whoever cheated, they kind of try everything that they say I do to as a curse? Wait, say that one more time. You say when they cheated. Like, when they cheated. Or when they just downright break their marriage. You said they attract. They have, yeah, they have, one of them might have go through financial issues. He had the lowest part of his life. I done seen some of them got sick. I done seen car accidents out of nowhere. Yeah. That could be like, mm-hmm. a, like you said, that could be the karma or from breaking a curse. Breaking a spell. Yeah, it's. And I don't see finance as the main one. Like, when people get divorced, I see the men. And usually, I'm not going to say the male, but mainly the male, I'm humbled in it. Yeah. The breadwinner. Yeah, because he's the head of the household. Yeah. So that's why. And I've been a person, too. When my baby daddy messed with his baby baby mama, she was married. And it affected our household in so many different ways. I had to leave him. I had to. How did it affect it? Uh, everything we tried for it, it would fail. Like I would try, like my job started cutting hours. That's why I knew he was. I used to be a married woman. I knew it. I told myself, I thought as Tom is hard as I feel like you slept with a married woman, and he was like, no, I didn't. But everything that we worked hard for it failed. Like it's just like we couldn't get out of a, a mess for nothing. And then it's funny because when I did left him, 
my life got a lot better. I got a way better job. I accomplished a lot, matter of fact. Now that I have not been with him. Yeah, that's that's deep. That's deep. I'm definitely going to read into that. You... Yeah, so that, that's how I learned my things. Because I actually tried to study things. Like, okay, let me see. When this person got married and got divorced, how is his life is now? How is her life is right now? Like, how did that work out? Then I studied in the past about how marriages were worked in. Because like I say, Egyptian people, they they believe heavily, I believe, in polygamy relationship. They were not monogamous people. Monogamous came more from the Europeans. Hmm. So, do you? Mm-hmm. So, what do you think? Do you agree with polygamy? Would you be in a polygamous relationship? I cannot be in a polygamous relationship because I am very jealous. <laughs> I cannot share myself with a different a man, a different one. And then all these STDs and stuff they got now with these man made diseases. Polygamy is totally dangerous for me. No, I could dig it. It's it's just way too dangerous. Uh, you know, me and her, she might one that go out and step and sleep with somebody, then she brings that back to me and him. Yeah. I can't do it. And it's two emotions, two females. And you know how females are together, like, we already can't. I mean, females, I love other females, but you know, we're way too much emotional, we're moody, being, so that's automatically drama. He might spend, like, 20 more minutes with her, I'm mad about that. Or he might spend an hour more with me, and she's mad about that. Yeah, true, true. Now, he might kiss her a different way. He might, you know, people might say, oh, you know, th- th- you guys, I always see him with them. They're really cute together. That might spark me mad, make me mad. Like, dang, you know, people start to notice he like her more than me. <laughs> <laughs> there are people that do it. I'm not going to say they don't, they are, but I think women that are into women are more great at doing it than women that are straight. No, I could dig that. Now, now, quick question. I want to get back to that, uh, to the spell stuff. Do you believe, like, items are cursed and people are cursed, too? Um, I did believe that when a person loves an item so much and when they die, you kind of, when you take, once you take their item, you kind of conjure them in your place, in your space. Now, is there a way to rid that? Uh... Yeah, but see, me personally, that that gets more into telepathy stuff, and I'm not into that type of stuff. What's that called? Telepathy. Oh, uh, see, I, you breaking it. You introducing me to a whole bunch of new stuff I never even heard of. <laughs> telepathy is when you're like a you heard of a medium. Oh yes, yes. Because you call dead people over. I, I'm not into that. That's what telepathy is. I'm not into any of that stuff. Okay, but do you believe? Too scary for that. Do you believe in like demons and stuff like that? Demons. Like what? Like I'm talking about like possession demon. Like somebody could possess you. You said what? Like somebody possessing your body, possessing your body. No, I wouldn't say that part. So what do you mean demons are humans? You mean just like people you encounter are just evil? No, like for example, if somebody go and kill a whole bunch of kids, that's a demon. Oh, yeah, well, true, yeah, true, true. Just as well as I'm sitting outside, I'm, I'm hungry one day, and some random person walk up to me and gave me food, or he's an angel. Mmm. That's it. I like the way you think. Oh, thank you. I'm about to go pick up a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to really, I'm about to... No, I like, I like, I like this conversation. And I, uh... I don't feel like heaven and hell is a state of mind. Like, for example, on Mother's Day, um, I took myself, my kids out to Mother's Day because you know, um, my father, my son's kid, my kid's father didn't do it, which is it didn't even matter because if it would have been his holiday, which is holiday coming up, I would have done for him regardless if we together or not. Mm-hmm. But he attached relationship with it. So on that day, I was walking. I seen a homeless guy was sitting on the corner. He was like, we were like walking to this a plaza, and he was just sitting there. He wasn't like. Bob and he wasn't asking for money and I just walked over and gave him $15 oh man and he was like oh thank you so much and he of course he told me God bless you and he started playing my son and started making little cheeky noises because I was always told a person that never asked like the home I, I, I worked at the hospital and I see home people all the time and I kinda hold on hold on, re- you- hold, on okay. re- hold on real quick 
Oh, you said so. You gave him the money. He said, "God bless you." Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. So in terms, if you you feel like if that person had the money but didn't give it to somebody, what would that make them? I mean, you don't have to. I don't feel like there's no like standards that hey, you have to give your money. It's all about you. Like if if I feel like it, because there's sometimes I don't I don't draw past situations that I could have helped. And I felt bad, like, dang, I should have pulled over and asked that old man that he needed to rob. He was carrying those groceries and out in the dark. I, I didn't feel like, I feel like just, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm going to be punished for it because I didn't do it. But it would have been nice and been good karma if I would have done it. Oh, good karma? Good karma is like bad karma. You know, like, somebody do something bad to you, you get it. You get bad things to you, it's back to you. Good karma, if you do good things, people, you attract good things back to you as well. Might not be in the same form, but... Like, for example, I might buy a smell of food. I might see a female couldn't pay for her food. And I say, you know what, don't worry about it. I'll pay for it. Add it on my ticket. And she's like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. Blah, 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 blah. Now, good comment is one day I might just receive the random $1,000 check in the mail. Or somebody, I might be at a point where I don't have the money. And somebody might seriously walk up to me and say, hey, I got you. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's love. No. Or somebody might do something good for my kids. That's love too. Yeah. Now, one more thing. Do you think I don't want to say everything happened for a reason, but like certain things set up a certain way? Like you said, what? Like, do you believe like everything happened for a reason? Yes, but I believe in that sometimes everything happened too because of our choices. Like, for example, if I sell drugs or whatever, <laughs> and this is a good example. That's my friend's example the other day, and all of a sudden I got locked up. I can't get mad about that because that's the attraction I put out there. I, I attracted what comes with it. You smell drugs. You know it's illegal. You're not supposed to do it. And this was the consequences. The accomplishment is jail. So what about like a situation? Let's say somebody just dead broke. They spent their last dollar. Then out of nowhere, money just come. But it always happened like that. That's just good karma. That's just good karma. Like it just come out of nowhere. Like, oh, it might come out of nowhere from you, but who say you didn't did nothing in the past? Because you know, karma don't always land it in the same week or month or whatever you do something. You probably could do something at way back two years ago, and soon at you at your lowest. Now, whoop, here's your rewarding. Okay, okay. But it don't come. Not I'm not saying like it fall off. It depends on what you ask for too. Because it depends on. Sometimes I be when I when things like for example when a bunch of bad stuff start coming, I don't sit in my mind like dang I probably done asked something for the universe, and this is what I'm gonna track right now. So I know I'm probably getting closer to what I asked for. By something the bad first. By a bunch of bad stuff just happened in general. Okay. Like if you say like I want a new car and then your old car just all of a sudden start dying. And then you end up, something happened, and you end up getting a brand new car. That's, like, how that worked, too? Yeah, that's exactly how that worked. It happened to me one time. <laughs> yeah, you kept thinking about the new car, and then it, and then it happened. But see, when you think about it, you say, oh, let's have a new car. It's, it depends on how you word it. Because, like, I can say, like, you got some people that can say, you know what? I love my car, but it would be good to have a new car because I can't keep driving with no air conditioning in my car. Now, see, the universe is something like that. Now, if you just... Down, like you say, I can't stand my car. Oh, I got this car in the first place. You pretty much do not appreciate what it did for you in the beginning, so you're not going to get anything out of that. Okay. Because you're not showing appreciation. You're just being a butthole. Okay, okay. I'm gonna, I want to I wanna talk to you about this later, too. Like, I want I, I want to get my questions together because I didn't know you was into this, and this is real interesting. I like stuff like this. I know life get hard, man. Whatever you going through, stay strong. Don't let it break you, man. It's dedicated to anybody that felt like giving up. Repeat after me, man. They say you won't let it break you, man. Just stay strong through the ups and downs. You won't see the light at the end. You won't win. I can't erase 
race I got demons that I can't escape I got dogs but I know they snakes I see they smiles but I know they fake I read they eyes man I know this hate I got a kid that I can't see Me and his mama ain't cool so she only doing that to hurt me I got friends that's more family than blood I got blood that don't show me no love I got a granny that won't give me no hugs People don't know me but wanna judge I got friends that'll diss me just to get a buzz I ain't a dealer but I know a few plugs I ain't a gangster but I will kill a thug I just want all of my seeds to be straight I just want to put food on a plate I just want more money in the safe I just want to be great You ain't hear me, I just want to be great I just want to be great I would never let a fucker break me and I let him see it like Tukey I ain't never had my hand out, I ain't never get a hand out I am too cool for you niggas, it's like I'm walking with a fan out I stand out, why they breaking on me? So much hate for like Satan on me Too much fake like the bracing on him You ain't with me, why you waiting on me? When I was young, they wasn't patient with me Said I'm crazy, got a patient in me Yeah, niggas try breaking me, but I'm on my own and that's thanks to me I'd have had a homie shake my hand Walk around like that's my man Talk behind my back, crazy though Robin nigga, he made a plan, I took the burner, he took the ran. it was dumb but I took the chance, we got booked and we went to court, I was thinking for it, he took the stand, yeah I lived a crazy life, Carry burners paid the price, couple hours at the district, you study overnight, did a couple years upstate, I ain't going back, that's enough break, you can never get enough cake, you can never get enough, ayy.